Introduction and Concept. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Andology, and this is my very first version one FPV ground station. I found it in the attic the other day, and I had to show you guys. I built this thing back in 2004, and with today being 2019, that's 15 years ago, and a lot of you probably didn't even know that FPV was a thing 15 years ago. YouTube wasn't even a thing 15 years ago. I'm really excited to bring this to you. There's a lot of things that I did here. There's a lot of work that I put into this, and no one's really ever seen it. So it's gonna be really interesting for me to take a look at it too. I'll give you an overview of some of the features, some of the things that I built with it, some of the ideas behind my design in the first place. Uh, I, I originally called it the ultimate FPV uh, ground station, a little bit like the ultimate FPV antenna tracker. So, um, but yeah, there's a few things here I'm keen to show you. And also I've got some development pictures that I've dug out. So that'll be interesting to look at. So anyone into FPV, anyone into the ground stations, sit tight. It's going to be a good one. I'm super excited to show you guys. Let's have a look. The version one. Just a bit of a backstory. You'll see here the logo Vantage Aerial Photography. This was a business I was running in Thailand when I lived in Thailand. Tiny little island, tropical island in the middle of nowhere which to be honest was actually one of the challenges um, in building something like this at the time was of course you know just having access to, to stuff that was a real problem and of course being on a small little island as well you know we, we I, I seem to remember we only even had um, dial-up internet we didn't even have broadband things like researching online were virtually impossible and you know you didn't have the selection of stuff like you do nowadays so that's where Vantage fits in and it was uh, doing things like golf courses beach resorts stuff like that and at the time, I was flying this dirty, great, horrible GSR 260, it was called. It's like 26cc petrol engine, like gasoline. Great for carrying big old payloads, like, you know, fancy camera rigs and things like that. But, you know, this is back, back in the day before we had things like flight controllers. It was nothing like that. Um, it was just you, the wind, and, uh, <laughs> and your seat, your pants. So this was really what I designed to, uh, to control that and to control the camera rig on board the helicopter. And so, you know, it's interesting back in the day when we were doing things like aerial photography, uh, and that is ultimately what became FPV uh, as we know it today, you know, throwing cameras on RC models and video transmitters and things like that and flying remotely. So, so it goes back a long way. And of course, you know, uh, back then no one had really done anything like this. So there was nothing that you could, there's nothing that you could go and look at for ideas or anything. There was nothing out there. It was almost like, um, I, I kind of knew what I didn't like about my bag of wires that I was using originally. And so I designed it around, you know, my experience of what I felt would be more convenient or comfortable to use. And, and for me, it was about the setup and the pack up time being minimal. So of course this, nothing to plug in, nothing to configure. It's just open it and off we go. Yeah, that's a general concept um, of what it was. Uh, and of course now I'll take you through some of the functions and the switches and buttons and, and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, let's see how we go. Features demonstration. First things first, I'll give you a quick tour of what we've got going on here so we know what everything is. Starting at the top, we've got a uh, 2.4 gigahertz video receiver here. There's the SMA antenna mount. This is a fan which I built a channel inside here which channels the air through and cools the video receiver. Uh, it's quite effective. Uh, this whole panel here is clear acrylic. They're all clear acrylic plant panels. I've gone for the leatherette, sort of like faux leather. It's, uh, it's pretty good because it's you know, handy to wipe clean. It's non-reflective. You don't get any glare from it. So I quite like using it. Um, and then obviously we've got the, the, the main TFT screen there, which is seven inch, 16 by nine. Um, and then coming down, we've got the power, power panel here where we've got uh, auxiliary power input. This is a recharge port for the main internal batteries, a fuse. And then we've got a bar graph to show the battery level. And then the main RC controller here is a Futaba Field Force 9 or T9CHP it was called, typical you know, Futaba controller, which I've just taken apart and embedded inside here. Uh, and then moving over, we've got the reprogramming port, 
Now, this, you know, 2004 was really before Arduinos were a thing. So uh, this has got a basic stamp uh, built inside uh, as the microcontroller. Um, and this is the reprogramming port. A uh, switch here, which controls the uh, auxiliary input or the video internal input being shown on the display. So if you had a, if you had a separate video receiver on a tripod, for example, you could just plug that in here and use the monitor there to view it. Um, equally with this green uh, output here is an output to a TV. So if you had a large screen, you could, you could run it into that. And then here are the main controls for the actual pan and tilt and things like that. We've got a sprung loaded switch here for triggering the photo or start and stop the video. And then here we've got a, a switch for gyro lock, stabilization lock on and off. We have a roll compensation adjustment, so camera roll. And then here we've got zoom in and zoom out. And then here we have the typical gimbal that you'd expect to see for pan and tilt with the associated trim uh, switches up and down, beep, 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 just like you'd expect. Um, and then here we have a, uh, a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Now, unfortunately here, the, the batteries are flat, but this is also the main power switch. So I don't know if you heard that. There's a switch inside here, which as you pull this out, it comes to life. Now I can simulate that by plugging in the auxiliary power. This is normally what would happen. You would take out the antenna and you would screw it onto the 2.4 receiver built in and it would come to life. So, um, but of course we don't need to worry about that because we've got the auxiliary power. Here as well, you'll see the logos now glowing. This is in standby mode. Now what you see here is the antenna for the Futaba, for the RC receiver and transmitter. Uh, now this is, you know, quite old. So this is back when we had, uh, you know, modulate, uh, FM modulation rather than what we have nowadays with a 2.4 control, uh, 2.4 gigahertz like spectrum and things. This is a telescopic antenna and I've made a custom mount. So when I remove the antenna, the mount there comes out and then we can just screw the antenna in there and we're good to go. And then when we're done, collapse the antenna. And in this mount here, there's a sprung loaded catch. And so when we insert that back in, these are connections that go down. So when you attach the antenna, it makes the connection and the microcontroller controls the, um, the slidey mount in and out. Uh, and there's a little white LED in there as well that lights up just in case I'm doing something and it's low light, you know, it's easy to see the mount to mount it in. So that came out nicely. Bit of a James Bond such as people always used to say. <laughs> I used to have the nickname of Q back in the day for obvious reasons. Um, and then there's a fan here, a cooling fan. Um, later in this video, I'll show you some of the, um, you know, work I was doing with the circuit boards and you'll be able to see what's inside there. But that's the main overview of the, uh, the essential components. Uh, the, the panels down here actually padded these ones. Um, I've, you know, reasonably straightforward. I just had a, a thin piece of foam that I laid on before I pulled the leatherette round and, and mounted it in. Um, and it gives it a nice touch. Uh, and I do like this stuff. It's, you know, like I say, it's very convenient. So this is the main power switch. So we'll boot it up. And you'll see the video screen has come alive, although as you can see, it's very, very dim. Um, I think, you know, over time, I think the backlight has probably given up the ghost after all the years, but, but yeah, so this is a review mode. It sparks up the screen um, and the, uh, the main RC transmitter doesn't, you know, doesn't come to life. Uh, this is just for reviewing footage. And then if you're going into flight mode, we would, Pop your antenna in. And as you can hear, the fans spark up. The Futaba has come on. And uh, this is where we would be in full control and flight mode. And then when you're done, 
shuts down. Remove the antenna. In the catch. And we're done. And that is the main components for my version one, aerial photography FPV ground station. Total tear down. And here we go, time for the tear down. Thank you for making it this far in the video. I did want to keep this video below 15 minutes, but uh, we'll see how we get on. It's probably going to run over that. But originally, I was just going to be posting some pictures of the original uh, pictures that I took when I built it uh, many years ago. The more I thought about it, it makes sense more to, while I've got it out, you know, take some screws out, we'll take some panels out, we'll have a look underneath and uh, see how I built things on, you know, inside, um, which should be interesting. So stick with me. I'll go through each panel one at a time and I'll remove them and we'll have a look underneath and I'll comment on some of the things that I've got going on in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll start off with the, with the middle panel. As I mentioned earlier in the video, all of these panels started off as clear perspex, clear acrylic sheet. Um, and so what I did here, this logo area, I masked off with masking tape, along with this area, which is the RGB LED window and simply sprayed the back with black paint, removed the masking tape and there we go, you've got your clear window. And if I zoom in briefly onto this logo, what you'll notice is it's kind of recessed back. It's quite, it's quite sunken far back into the background to give it that perspective look. It's more, can't see it on the camera so much, but it's quite effective in, uh, when you see it in real life. This is a light box here that I made using a servo case from an old Futaba servo. In the side of the box here, we've got UV LEDs that I've got in the sides, which illuminate the logo inside that's just printed on white paper. And there's about three or four three millimeter thickness sheets of acrylic stacked up to give it its depth. And of course, all of the light illuminates quite evenly around and gives it a backlight glow effect. You've got a small bit of strip board here, uh, just with a couple of, uh, well, four current limiting resistors for the UV LEDs. And then I've got a diffuser here. It looks like I've just used toilet paper <laughs> um, as a diffuser for the RGB LED, so that on the other side, it sort of spreads the light a bit more. And uh, so that's the main panel. We've also got the, the antenna mount here in this section where um, we'll remove that. And on the back here, you can see we've just got wires that come through. If you saw the previous part of the video demonstrating the removing the antenna and the slide come out. Um, yeah, so you've just got these two wires here which plug into, you've got a socket here and a socket here going into the main board, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Uh, and so this connector is from the antenna mount as the switch. And then this is for powering the logo LEDs. And so that's about it. You've got a fan on there as well. Uh, and this fan cable I had to release from down here that plugs into the power supply board, which again, we'll take a closer look at next. Here we are with the central panel removed. This here is from actually the back of the panel with the switch and then the RGB LED. So that would be screwed to the middle panel using these spacers. And here is the main power supply board. It's quite a chunky heat sink on here. There was reasonably limited options of heat sinks where I was living at the time. But these are linear regulators, um, so they actually do generate a reasonable amount of heat. And you know, obviously 15 years ago, the technology was that, that there wasn't particularly efficient. Things like TFT screens and you know, they, they consumed far more power than the modern day ones do. But yeah, so I've got a few relays on here. Um, fortunately, it looks like everything here is labelled quite well. So let me zoom in on that for you. It's all done quite neatly back then, look. So it's quite, you can read where all the cables are going. And equally the same here. And you'll see I've actually individually labelled each of these cables. Now, these are the ones that go off to the RC controller. 
Uh, so this is like an RC controller distribution board, which is you know just literally where all the bits and pieces come in from things like the gimbals and the switches. This big fat wire here is coming in from the gimbal control. And then we've got another cable here going off to this side, which is the wires from this. And then at the back here, it just feed off to the actual circuit board under here which is the RC controller. This here is the micro switch mount for the video antenna. So you can see the wires coming off the back here from the micro switch inside. You'll see here I've got a speaker uh, which has been driven by the main board which is, which is more underneath this panel which we will take a look at next. So the gimbal panel Quite straightforward, just got your gimbal here which I've mounted through the clear perspex and you can see actually the foam underneath that I've used and then pulled it round and just used spray adhesive um, to stick this down. Uh, yeah, so we've got that, it's all quite nicely bound and wrapped um, just to stop things getting caught up and increase airflow and things like that inside. And then over here, this is the, the main microcontroller board as you'll see here, you've got your basic stamp two, and then here is a small, here's an NE555 timer. Uh, this I'm just using as a monostable debouncer for the main power switch input. Um, and really, this is just, I mean, it's pretty crammed out actually, really, for what you used to use a basic stamp for. I'm using most of the inputs and outputs. I mean, I've got the RGB LED being driven from this. It's also controlling the servo that controls the draw. Um, it's also controlling the speaker with the sound effects, um, as well as the power supply functions. So there's a few things going on there, but the circuit itself is very straightforward. Um, just the usual few components, you know, capacitors, transistors, things like that. This is one of the batteries. There's just some foam there. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, these are lead acid batteries, sealed lead acid batteries. So six volts, kind of thing you'd see in a moped. Yeah, so six volt, five amp hour lead acid battery. And you'll notice here, look, I've built like a wall with supporting braces, epoxied to the bottom with foam here. And so the idea of that, when the battery is sitting in its cage, and we've got the foam on and then the panel screwed down on top of that it can't go anywhere even if I drop the case there's an awful lot of structural support down here uh, making sure it's supported so you know it's important as a mobile case that things with a lot of sort of energy stored in them like a battery in terms of inertial energy it's important we secure those and you know even a couple of G is enough to um, put an awful lot of force on the structure so there's only so far you can go, but yeah, I mean, they're reasonably and they're okay. There's two of those. There's another one on this side. Um, so two of them in series giving me 12 volts. And that's the main area for here. Um, nice empty space here because obviously the depth, the depth of this had to be allowed for. So of course, you know, that determined already where things like the batteries would be. But I mounted them this end so that it would counterbalance the screen side, obviously there's weight in the lid, um, trying to make the whole case kind of rock backwards. So by mounting your battery packs on this end, you can sort of move the center of gravity uh, more to where you want it. So that was the idea with that. So we'll move on to have a look at the next panel. The left hand panel, very similar to the other one. You've got your clear perspex panel here again with the foam underneath and then the switches just mounted into the back with just Simple holes drilled, really. I don't think there's anything more challenging than that. Uh, and again, your cable tie wrapped here with the spiral wrap as well. And then, as mentioned, there's the other six volt battery uh, in series, giving it 12 volts. This is the main driver board for the TFT display. And it had this nasty connector with a really fat cable. And there wasn't really a way of kind of cutting it and soldering individual wires onto this connector. Um, it's like a, a proprietary connector, it's not sort of anything you see anywhere else. So I kind of had to run with it. So this is where I've put the driver board for the TFT display. 
and there's a few AV inputs and outputs on the back there that go off to the, the sockets on the other panel. Um, but yeah, there's nothing more complex than that really under there. And of course, you know, you've got your power sockets here, which just feed in round to the main power distribution board. Um, so yeah, we'll move on to the RC panel. The main RC controller panel was actually quite challenging, mainly because of trying to mount the circuit board to the back of the panel. Um, and I came up with this just using spacers and some plywood uh, braces that essentially just compress it against some foam and some other mounts there. Uh, and that worked out okay. And then I've actually had to remove this just tie wrap to the back because it's part of all the original controller with the variable resistor pots section. And I've just kept that under there. Uh, this is ultimately what I'd end up using if I was going to put any extra sockets or switches um, to be able to have auxiliary controls, I would tap into these inputs. So I've kept that just tie up to the back. Uh, and that's about it. Under here you've got the modulator, FM modulator. As I said before, this is kind of before the times of 2.4 gigahertz FR Sky spectrum type control. This was FM 72 megahertz range. You'll notice this aluminium plate here. This I did as a grounding plane for the antenna because there was nothing else to ground it on. And it looked to me as though the actual Futaba case was acting as an entire ground plane. So I replicated that with here. I was worried about embedding the module internally and how it would affect the range. So yeah, that's the central panel. So last but not least, we'll We'll check out this one and see what's going on with that servo business. So I've removed this panel so we can have a look underneath here because this is where the main servo mechanics are for the antenna mount drawer. And what you'll notice is it's just using these V-groove roller bearings. And so I've, I've built a, a shelf, if you like, of acrylic sheet, rounded off the sides with just a aluminium right angle and then you've got your push rod here and ball joints and so it just slides in and out and keeps it very sturdy on these mounts back and front and then there's the white LED that lights up with of course the actual connection there going to the modulator for the antenna. And what I've done here is I've rigged up this cable here which will allow me to simulate the antenna being plugged in and not and I've given it some power. So if we disconnect, you'll hear the warning tones that it's going to release. And of course you saw there the servo. Push it out, we'll go back. And that was how I did that. It's very, very sturdy. I was quite quite pleased when I was finished with it. Um, of course I knew I was going to have the antenna mounted in here and with the possibility of it getting knocked. So I had to assume it was, might take a bit of a battering. Um, so it was kind of over engineered, big blocks of wood. I've set the angle in here rather than on here to give it more stability. Um, and yeah, the servo does a good job and yeah, it works quite effective. So that was how I did that. Uh, again, just using the V-bearings with the sliding tray. I'm going to get these panels put back on the base and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the lid section and I'll remove the panel from the lid and we'll see what we've got going on behind here. Well, I've got you there. If you have enjoyed this video so far, please like the video. And of course, you know, this is just my version one FPV ground station. Um, and if you're interested in seeing my version two, three and what I'm now working on my version four, then of course, you know, by subscribing, uh, you'll be kept up to date with my latest videos, creations, inventions, uh, goodness knows what else. So thank you again for choosing to watch this video. Uh, let's crack on with this lid. We'll get the panel off and uh, we'll take a look inside. And then following that, I'll have some, some development photos as well from when I originally built it. So let's get the panel off. As mentioned before, the panels are all made of clear acrylic, clear perspex. And these trim lines here are actually made of balsa wood, uh, which I used some sanding sealer and painted it black. And likewise, the frame around the TFT screen as well. I laid up a plan 
um, just like you would with a, a model airplane kit, you know, balsa kit, made the plan on the computer, printed it out, and then laid down the balsa strips, joined them together, used some filler, a bit of paint, and there we go. That was the frame surround. Um, main, main objective here was to try and, you know, of course this is all clear, so we could have this cut out here, and so I've just, you know, cut the cut the material around it and so to cover over that cut line that's the idea of putting these strips in. So let's take a look behind. Starting with the internals here I did mention earlier about this fan shroud that I'd created behind the panel and so this is the area where the fan blows in cool air and it flows along this channel and passes straight over the video receiver now cooling for me was very important on this because bear in mind I was using this in Thailand where the ambient temperature would be you know sort of 30, 35 degrees centigrade, 100 degrees Fahrenheit and so this cooling may seem sort of overkill to some people but if you bear in mind the average ambient temperature it was very important that I included uh, various elements of cooling. The, the video receiver here does actually get reasonably warm as does the voltage regulators down there in the power supply as you saw the large heat sink and the fan down here. Um, and so yeah, balsa wood, looks like I've just hot glued that in there. Uh, again, the same wooden block system, just epoxy resin in. Um, and on, on these holes here, what I generally do is I'll, I'll fill the hole, drill the hole slightly undersized for the screw, and then screw the screw in, unscrew it, pop some thin sino in, and then screw the screw back in again, unscrew it, put some more few drops of thin sino and what it will do is sort of solidify the wood inside and almost make a permanent thread. Um, it's almost like putting a tap in it. Um, so that's the general system I use for mounting the panel and then there's some foam here just as some sort of support if it gets crushed or pushed in um, it should stop it. Um, and then if we move on to look at the panel You'll see the back here where we have the fan mounted that blows directly down into this area. And then the air is channeled along through here, passes straight over and then out. Um, and then here we've got some components for the, for the TFT monitor, including you've got a button bar here as well, down the bottom that I had to cut out. Um, just wooden blocks here to mount the TFT screen behind. One thing worth mentioning is that when I made this, there was no, I had no access to any machining, so everything I had to do with hand tools. And so things like cutting these circles out was quite challenging. I ended up using one of those uh, big uh, circular saw almost uh, drill bits which you'd use to make um, holes in doors to put the handle in, uh, the lock mechanism in. Um, and so, you know, even cutting the Cutting the perspex was was really quite quite a horrible job, you know. Um, so you know, and these these aluminium flight cases that I'd bought, they're they're not even perfectly square. So of course, you know, even though you design your design perfectly square based on measurements, you'll find that you know you need to sort of trim off quite a lot just to fit the case, um, not being perfectly square. But yeah, you know, I'm only talking a few millimeters here or there. But it's important when you're looking for a nice nice tight fit. Um, so that was one of the biggest challenges really was just not having any access to any machining um, services or you know only having a limited number of hand tools. Um, so yeah it was definitely that was definitely one of the most challenging parts of it uh, and of course no proper workshop this was like basically done in my living room <laughs> along with my uh, wife wasn't too happy but she knows me it's a normal occurrence. <laughs> so, um, and that's the lid section with the TFT and the video receiver. Please like, share and subscribe.